Joining us now is former WBC welterweight champion, also an actor, Vicious Victor Ortiz. Thank you so much for stopping by to talk a little fight stuff Thank with us. You. And listen, everybody knows that you were in Expendables 3. We got to ask, is there another one coming out? Any chance for four? I'll tell you one thing. It'd be an awesome thing to do, but uh, as of right now, I'm just trying to go back to my, my old ways. The know, roots, yeah. Stomping well, ground. We'll get into that in a second. You're <laughs> yes, pretty successful at that recently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Victor, in mixed martial arts, we tap gloves at the beginning of the fight. In your experiences, <laughs> would you advise Conor McGregor not to go and try and tap Floyd Mayweather's glove oh, oh, when the fight starts? I'm just asking, Vic. It's a big bugaboo. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, what, what, what advice would you give Conor McGregor? Obviously, it's his first pro boxing fight, and he's doing it against Floyd Mayweather. What advice would you give him? You know, uh, usually advice, I mean, it's like me asking you guys and me making my uh, UFC debut. Dude, what am I supposed to do? Right, like, right. <laughs> what should I do with my hands? Might be a little bit too late, <laughs> but I had... <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's two different sports, man. I right. compared it like this: uh, the champion of tennis versus the champion champion of ping pong. Mm -hmm. They're both great in what they do. Both have, you know, their their uh, their rackets. They both have their courts, mm -hmm. but it's two different worlds. Yeah. But at the same time, I wouldn't go in a you know a, a octagon with you or you. I'm mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> well, we know that you've been in the ring with Floyd, but if you were fighting Conor, let's say that, let's take it from another side, how would you beat Conor McGregor? Well, obviously don't let him pressure you or smother you because that's where they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. I just keep him on the distance and, I mean, and, you know, Floyd's, he's pretty, he's pretty awesome at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Paulie Malignaggi has been all over the place for the sparring issue that he had with Conor McGregor. This morning he went on the herd with Colin Cowherd and this is what he had to say. I still think Floyd Mayweather, although he trains, is still underestimating him a little bit. Like, why are you doing Jimmy Kimmel a week and a half out of the fight? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you traveling to LA when you're not, you're supposed to be in training camp? Why are you moving around this much? You gotta get your game face on because at the end of the day, you're gonna have all the skills in the world, but if you don't have your game face on, somebody's intensity can devour you, even if you are better than that person. So it's important to have the psychological approach be correct, as well as the physical approach. And we'll find out if Floyd has that next week. As you've seen in the build-up to this fight, Conor McGregor, he's, he's brash. He's confident. Floyd's seen everything. Do you feel as though the antics may be getting to Floyd? You see Floyd riding horses. Is that showing that he's relaxed or that he might be, like, taking this guy for granted? No, I, I don't think, uh, you know, Floyd's going to take somebody for granted. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did me, though. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, uh, no, I don't think so. You know, I think for once, maybe... In a sense, McGregor's not a, as big of a worry. So, well, I guess, yeah, in a sense, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably are right there. I mean, you see, right but you, you kind of see it, right? You see him, he's so relaxed and so comfortable. It's like almost like, like Paulie said, it, does he have his game face on when he doesn't seem to be truly I in mean, training camp? I mean, you saw that. I saw the game face at the press conference, this particular one I was there. So I saw Floyd's game face, and I haven't seen that game face in a while. So okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's, he's there. Um, especially the way, I mean, they're both obviously attacking one another, but, you know, sometimes I think maybe McGregor has a little upper hand on the, the talks, and that's very not cool. <laughs> yeah. So, Victor, I'm sure you heard, obviously, all this stuff between Polly and Connor. Do you think Polly has a right to be upset with everything that happened? Absolutely. I mean, hey, it's um, one of those things where nobody saw the whole sparring session right i'm pretty sure you yourself being awesome fighters which i'm a fan of and i've seen you guys you guys have been clipped and sparring or whatever yeah. not that you go down or anything but you've been clipped you've been rocked i'm pretty sure you get out of the ring like god it's not gonna happen again or sometimes you maybe stepped the wrong way and you slipped or whatever it happens but yeah i think it's it's a valid point for you know polly to be upset but you know i, I just don't see why if none of us saw the whole was it 12 rounds they're supposed to spar? Yeah. Why judge it like that? But hey, to each his own, you know? Yeah. Conor McGregor has said that after this fight, he's going to continue boxing and doing mixed martial arts. As a boxer, he will need sparring partners. You've seen him now reach out to multiple world champion boxers to try to help him improve faster. With all that's happened with Pauly, would you, as a former world champion, be open to helping Conor McGregor, are you kind of like, I don't know, man, this guy may try to do me bad in the media to elevate himself. It's like, you guys are champs like myself, you know, so I don't let people record me. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a big no-no. So that's the you first mistake, Paul. You come into, you come into my, my, my gym, no. 
Well, you don't let people record you, but they didn't need to because just a couple of weeks ago right here on FS1, <laughs> yeah. you got the win. So you're talking about getting back to what you really yeah, do for yeah. a living there Absolutely. and that's yeah, fighting. Yeah. So how good did that feel and, and, and what's next for you? It's crazy because I was just speaking to the two great champions yeah. right next to us that, hey, it was the first time in a while where I felt like comfortable. The first round I came out, but a little aggressive. A little too fast. I got caught with a couple uppercuts. I was like, cool. The bell rings. I go back to the corner. How's that, champ? I said, he's got some pop, man. <laughs> he says, hey, champ, stay composed, relax. Do, keep doing what you're doing. Start moving your head. Start circling this and that. But yes, sir. Okay. He says, all right. He says, your baby's watching. Remember that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Got Point took in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we went back in there and just focused completely. And thanks to Coach Haas, he, uh, Guided me exactly to where I needed to be and what positions to take, and thankfully you got him, got him out of there. All right, nice. Well, thank you so much for uh, for coming by, and I know here in the break you guys are still going to talk some shop. Yeah, you guys cool. almost threw down here. It was kind of great. <laughs> oh, no way. I love yeah. yeah. it. Like, no, and then the I moment, did this. The no, wait, Kenny, you stand here. <laughs> then I did this. It's great. Love, love having you here, Victor.